Now that we understand how the converter section converts AC current to DC current and how the DC link bus section filters voltage pulses and current pulses and stores energy, we need to spend some time and learn how the inverter section works. The inverter section uses what's called insulated gate bipolar transistors to convert DC current to AC current. It's important to understand because there will be references to IGBTs when you are troubleshooting variable frequency drives. I now have the variable frequency drive power component circuit open in multi-sim and I'm going to simulate the inverter in run mode and we will see the uh, output waveforms. I have removed the motor and I have three oscilloscopes connected and I had to do that because it gets really busy trying to view it on a three channel scope. It's very hard to distinguish each waveform. Now in the inverter section we have three sets of transistors and they work together. IGBT1 and IGBT2 are tied together. The emitter on transistor 1 collects, sorry, connects to the collector on transistor 2. If both of these transistors were on at the same time, you would have a short across the DC bus and you would have some serious issues going on. So we have a controller that only allows one of them to be on at any given time. And as a matter of fact, if one is on, the other is off. If the other is on, the other, the opposite one is off. So they're always toggling. Just think of transistor one and transistor two toggling on and off. And that is controlled by this driver circuit right here. It's called a pulse width modulation three phase sinusoidal driver. It tries to replicate the AC output at the inverter leads that connect to the motor. These two leads toggle. P1 and not P1 are always switching back and forth in a pre-timed sequence. The same for P2 and not P2 and P3 and not P3. So we can call it phase one control, phase two control, and phase three control. Okay. Now if I open this up, there's a uh, there, there's a um, a box that allows us to make adjustments. We can change the switching frequency. It's called the reference frequency, but if you were programming it on the drive, it would be called a uh, switching frequency or carrier frequency. I can change the speed from 60 hertz to 30 hertz using the modulation frequency. So we'll do some of that. Okay, so I'm going to uh, zoom out and we'll do a quick power flow through the transistors. And um, we'll just do one because otherwise it's going to take forever. The, the same thing would happen. What, what I'm going to show you now, the power flow, will happen with the other three transistors, we'll say. So uh, power will flow if IGBT T1 is turned on. Power will flow through the collector emitter lead. It will flow onto T1 out to the motor. Some current will come back on T2. There, now there is overlap with three phase and some current will come back on T3. It'll come through IGBT4 onto the DC bus, back to the supply, and some current will come through on IGBT6 and back to the supply. And then one of them will shut off and then a little bit of current will continue to flow on the other one and so on. So they, and they sequence in threes. So just keep that in mind. And that's how they work. Okay, so what I'll do now is I will run the oscilloscopes. And we have phase A running and phase B and phase C. Now, if you look at the output, if you can zoom in, you will see that there's pulses 
of voltage or slices of voltage and the controller the sinusoidal controller creates this PWM and the width of those pulses determines the average voltage that's applied to the motor stator leads if you were to plot measure each one of those and plot those values on a chart or in some graph paper they would end up looking similar to an AC waveform now you'll notice that they don't line up they're out of phase with each other so the starting point of each square vertical uh, waveform pulses we'll say are uh, are out of phase by 120 degrees each and that's why I couldn't put it all on one screen because you would you would see you would see um, so much overlap you wouldn't be able to see each waveform so each motor lead sees these pulse width modulated output waveforms now right now we are running at 60 Hertz so what I will do I will slow the motor down I haven't tried speeding it up yet I'll, I'll, I'll I'll take it down to 30 Hertz and you're going to notice a different looking waveform so I'll play it I've slowed it down now we're controlling the output at a slower frequency so on the same oscilloscope screen you're going to have less alternations you're gonna have half the alternations of what you had at 60 Hertz I can try to take it up to six uh, sorry to 120 I haven't uh, I haven't done that yet we'll see if the simulation can handle it so now we're gonna take it up super fast one two zero hopefully it can handle it and I have to stop it and restart it Now we should see a lot of alternation. So now the motor is running twice the base speed. The base speed would be 60 hertz. Now we're running at 120 hertz. One more thing we can do is we can adjust the carrier frequency. So I'll stop it. And the carrier frequency will determine how many bars are produced to replicate that waveform I'll change it I'll take it down to one kilohertz click OK you might not see a big difference in that case oh there's a slight difference so that's a that would be a noisy you, you would it's a lot easier on the motor but you can certainly uh, certainly see the uh, the pulse width modulation that's used to uh, recreate that AC waveform what I'll do now is I'll just take that up to 16 kilohertz I think I think it's going to slow down the simulation quite a bit it's a lot of work for it yeah because each one of those is turning on and off 16,000 times a second to create that AC so when you set the carrier frequency on an inverter drive to 16 kilohertz it's basically what you're seeing at the output very very fast switching it's actually harder on the drive okay so I'll just set it back I'll set it back down to uh, 2 and then we'll wind this up there you go so that's what you see on the output of the drive so when you're measuring these things you have to take that into account if you've got one of your transistors blown out you're going to see a problem when you're troubleshooting they talk about testing the IG, IGBTs or having a short circuit fault at, at the IGBTs they're talking about the output transistors that connect directly to the motor leads and they are in the inverter section.